Hey folks, Sean here at Sony's MotorStorm Apocalypse event here in downtown San Francisco, where I'm joined by Simon O'Brien, the art director on the project. Simon, thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for interviewing me. Sure. My pleasure. So you guys, you guys uh, unveiled the game back at E3. Uh, for those of us who, um, for the uninitiated out there, go ahead and catch us up on the, the the general gist of what MotorStorm Apocalypse is all about. This new setting that you guys are placing the game in. Uh, well. I mean, basically, we wanted to take it somewhere different, somewhere that gave us a lot more of a richer visual theme. So before we'd done MotorStorm that was off-road, that it was, uh, it was chaotic and it was brutal, we wanted to take it a little bit further, take it into the city and try and do something more with that. I think we did find originally that the city was a little bit too rigid, so we needed to break that city apart, make it a lot more broken and, uh, and, and kind of ripped apart by this earthquake, which was suggested by the game director. So. Yeah, we, um, we did that and we developed the city and then we found that that was actually a perfect fit for MotorStorm for the chaotic racing um, and ripping it apart, uh, ripping the city apart, the roads apart, going into subterranean racing, racing on the tops of buildings as they were collapsing themselves um, and basically just uh, getting that MotorStorm feel back but in a city with all that brutal off-road racing. Yeah, you mentioned going on tops of buildings, underneath buildings. Talk to us about like Hey, the creative process of choosing types of tracks that you want us to do, because I would imagine the apocalypse presents a lot of opportunities for just where in the city you can set these tracks. Yeah, I mean, we've been able to do a lot of things because of the apocalypse, because of this earthquake. Uh, basically gives us artistic license to do whatever we want to make a good racing track. Um, but also it, it allows us to do whatever we want to, to make a really good visceral kind of visual feel. Um, I think um, what we wanted to do, uh, originally we did feel like we might have been a little bit uh, restricted by setting it in a city, but uh, we soon then started to uh, research a lot of photo reference from kind of Bay Area cities and West Coast cities uh, and start to incorporate those into our track. So we go from industrial areas to downtown areas to uh, sort of soaring rooftops on, on skyscrapers. And, and actually, it, I, I don't know whether it surprised us, but we, we kind of felt that we were getting a lot more out of the game than we than we thought we might do, just setting it in a city. You know, a lot of cynical people were just saying, oh, set it in a city and that's it. But what we've done with the city is just like beyond what you could imagine. So it's, um, it's good, both from the themes of what's in the city and also from what the, uh, what the apocalypse lends us and what the earthquake does to all the tracks. All right, now, uh, Simon, the MotorStorm series has long been known for the bold ways that you guys mix and match different vehicle types. You'll see motorcycles out there with trucks and, and other different combinations. And you guys didn't even settle this time around. You, you decided, you know what, we need more car classes in there. Tell us what you guys have done with the cars and just how crazy it is. Okay, um, well, originally I think we had seven classes of vehicles. Um, we expanded that with Pacific Rift and uh, expanded into monster trucks. Arctic Edge on the PSP expanded into skidoos and snow trucks. Um, but we wanted, to, we wanted to take it a little bit further and, and basically add some more classes that made the most of the urban environment and the urban setting that we had. So we added supercars, we added superbikes, we added choppers, uh, and we added minis, the compact class. Uh, but also what we did is that we refined the physics model, the driving physics model, to a degree that we could split apart um, some of the existing classes, such as the rally car class, into rally cars, muscle cars, and supercars. Now, you guys are also showing multiplayer here tonight. What are you guys doing new on the multiplayer side of things? Um, well, one feature that was definitely requested quite a lot last time was four-player split screen. So we've added that. We've added four-player split screen. Um, and that's just great. That's, uh, you know, playing with uh, three other friends, splitting the screen up, causing a lot of chaos and crashing everybody out. It's, it's just ace. Um, multiplayer online as well is 16-player online. That's, um, that's uh, straight from launch. And uh, we're also doing a lot more with multiplayer in terms of rewards, in terms of perk systems. Uh, taking a leaf out of a lot of the first-person shooter books, mainly because uh, they, they just do it so well. All right, Simon, well, I'm a big fan of the apocalypse and just really destruction in general. So tell me, when is this game going to be out in stores? Okay, um, it's out in the EU in Mar on March 16th, and then I think it's got an April release date in the States. So it's not too far after the, the EU release. There you guys have it. That's your update on MotorStorm Apocalypse, courtesy of our friend Simon O'Brien.